Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the last Deakin seminar of 2021. Uh, it's my great pleasure to welcome Dr. Annette Brooks. Uh, Dr. Brooks has finished her PhD in international economics at the KU Leuven and has previously worked as an assistant professor at the Department of Economics at the Vienna University of Economics and Business. Uh, she is currently the project officer in the Digital Economy Unit of the European Commission's Joint Research Center. Her research interests include price discrimination in e-commerce, cultural trade in audiovisual services, and market power of online platforms. And today she will present her work on gravity and trade in video on demand services. Uh, so we have approximately uh, 40 minutes for the presentation. And if you have any minor questions, just to clarify things uh, on the go, feel free to ask. And if you have anything larger to ask about, then please do so after the presentation. So, uh, Annette, thank you for being here, and the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Wojciech. Um, so, this is a joint paper with Susanna Studnitska from the UCD in Dublin. And since I'm working for the European Commission, I have to make a short disclaimer, especially since this is recorded. <laughs> so um, although I'm working for the European Commission, the views expressed are those of Susanna and me and may not under any circumstances be regarded as stating an official position of the European Commission. So this behind, <laughs> we can start. So um, I will just give you a quick overview of what we are going to talk about. So very normal um, presentation, starting with a short introduction and motivation. Then I will in, uh, very extensively talk about the data. As this is very novel and um, comprises several data sets. And I will click, quickly go over the estimated, estimation strategy. Um, the results and robustness checks and uh, give you like the conclusion and what we found regarding our hypothesis that we stated in the beginning. So just uh, before we really dive in deep, I would like to define some of the terms I'm going to use later on. So we have um, we, are, we will be talking about video on demand services. So um, in the group of video of demand services, we have um, different, um, different players with different business models. So we have on the one hand, uh, subscription video on demand services where you pay a flat fee and you can watch as much as you like on um, series or movies. Um, these are, for example, Netflix or Hulu, Disney Plus or HBO. Um, but you also have transactional video on demand services such as Apple iTunes, Google Play, or um, Skybox Office, where you just buy, pay for the title that you're actually watching, or you just buy one season that you watch. And um, you also have ad based video on demand services that are a bit uh, complementary to um, the SVOD, such as YouTube, Pluto TV, Xumo, or Peacock where um, you still have ads, which is more like um, analog TV, where you watch um, content and then you have like an ad block of maybe uh, two minutes. Um, there are also some services that have uh, mixed models such as Amazon Prime um, and Peacock. So Peacock, Peacock has this uh, AVOD, but you can also pay for a premium service where you um, just um, can watch everything without um, incurring extra fees. Um, then, of course, why did we actually start on this? Um, it's uh, it's uh, started out of general interest some um, years ago, but also um, in the past two years, it has been come to attention that uh, this video on demand service is actually account for a very large um, share of internet traffic in total, although it's a very small number of connections itself, but the, the downstream rates, um, they take up a lot of speed from the internet so that actually during the beginning of the pandemic, um, the large streaming um, platforms were even asked to reduce the speed so that the internet infrastructure would also hold for other more um, important tasks. 
So we, in this, I, I hope the title was not too misleading. We're going to talk mainly about Netflix in this paper, as it is uh, um, the platform that is most widely um, distributed and only, you, you can, it's more easy to say the countries where it's not present than the countries where it is present, because it's not present in China, North Korea, Syria, and Crimea, and otherwise you can watch it all over the world. So therefore it's the largest platform with respect both to coverage and to subscribers. So Amazon Prime um, is um, available in many countries, but not uh, by far in this many countries. Um, it accounts for only Netflix alone. So we, before we saw that 60% um, in total of the internet traffic is um, going to video on demand, but the sole single service that um, accounts for most of these clicks is actually Netflix with 13% of global internet downstream traffic, which is huge compared to what it is. Um, it has about 195 subscribers globally and uh, 62 million in Europe, Middle East and Africa. So they only um, publish this very, um, aggregated figure for uh, Europe and uh, Africa and Middle East. So there are some um, estimations by the economists that would point it at about 58 million in Europe. Um, we have seen over the last years an increasing amount of Netflix original content. So there's a lot of um, debates about if Netflix is just importing a lot of American goods or a lot of American audio, um, audiovisual content to the EU, for example, with um, kind of disregarding European um, cultural diversity. Um, so there have been some, some requests and uh, regulations by um, single countries, but also by the commission itself, that for example, 30% of the content should be from the EU. And subsequently, Netflix um, also upped their expenditure on local content for the use. So they spent $2.4 million in 2019 in original content. They wanted to spend 750 million pounds in 2020 only in the UK. Um, they also set up a number of offices in the EU, so they are active in uh, Madrid and that's the largest headquarters in Amsterdam. They are in Berlin and London. And although none of it's not you anymore, of course. Um, so by being both um, a producer and a distributor, we have also facing other political questions of whether they push for their own products. So for example, if we could compare this um, maybe to the Google shopping case, but this is further along the line, we're not going to talk about this, but this is one thing you could think about in, a, in another paper, for example. Um, and then the, another um, thing uh, that we have to bear in mind is that national broadcasts actually still dominate the number of viewing hours. So they're still, um, although Netflix is big, they capture this uh, large amount of um, downstream traffic. And the, the number of viewing hours is still um, one, uh, is still two thirds in, um, in TV, in linear TV, and only one third in streaming and other um, ways of watching. And so in general, uh, we also get some demographics from our data. We see that um, Netflix is uh, attracting a younger audience and near TV. So we um, will look at uh, Netflix from an international trade perspective, since we both uh, did our training and learn in international trades. I later moved on to more also in digital economy. So from a trade perspective, um, a trade in services online would uh, tremendously reduce transport, transport costs, but we can, um, although we see by the internet, we don't see, we don't have transport costs as we would have with physical goods, we cannot talk about um, frictionless trade because uh, there are national subsidies um, schemes in place in the audiovisual sector, there are dubbing license agreements, so Actually, that you don't only have intellectual property rights or licensing on movies, um, but also on the subtitles. So you cannot just have, uh, I mean, uh, these auto subtitles that you can have, for example, on YouTube, I think, uh, where they're just generated on the spot. This is actually, you cannot do this for movies. So you have to actually buy the rights um, for the dubbing and for the, um, for the, uh, for the subtitles. 
we find that um, therefore, because you, in, in Europe, you have still for each country, you have to buy um, the rights to stream or to broadcast a film or a TV show. Um, we find that auto Netflix geo blocking is still present. So you maybe uh, see like a little note um, <clears throat> in Netflix um, that you can watch like a title if you actually know the exact URL of the title in Netflix, you may not even be able to watch it. And sometimes when you try to use the VPN service and then all the VPN service, I will just tell you, no, you're using a VPN service, you cannot watch this. So, so far, um, audiovisual content has been exempted from the digital single market strategy that actually um, wanted uh, to ensure that goods can uh, trade over borders frictionlessly. Um, but there's been an exemption, and this exemption is until at least 2022. So there was a um, regulation in place. This has been revised last year, but um, audiovisual has been um, exempted again. And so there's another revision coming up next year or the year after, depending um, on the delays. So we have, um, because of this geo blocking, there's still fragmentation of Netflix catalogs across countries. So we cannot talk. Um, we cannot watch everything. So for example, French movies, you can mostly watch in France or Polish movies, mostly in Poland. So maybe when, when you're lucky, you can watch them in England or Ireland, but in Spain, you know, the smallest catalog ever uh, in all of Europe, and we cannot just watch any title. Um, um, all these uh, points aside, We've seen before that um, Netflix has um, pledged to spend a lot of money in uh, European productions. And by now, it even has uh, more big productions than European broadcasters and has um, in its own service almost a monopoly to impose its content. So uh, this 30% supposed to be Euro European, we check that, you will see later on, they don't have it yet. So this is one thing we're going to um, we have a closer look on uh, later. So I will uh, now directly come down to the research questions. Don't want to uh, um, take longer um, and keep you waiting for what's coming next. So we are first going to look um, how fragmented is the Netflix um, catalog. So we are going to look at this in a descriptive manner. So we're going, as I said before, we're going to look at the data um, and descriptives um, extensively. Then we are looking at the pattern, pa uh, patterns of content availability, so the extensive margin and the content viewing. Because we can see um, similar to goods trades, we also need someone to import and to distribute in a country. Also Netflix here would be the the entity that actually decides what gets imported. Um, but it's at the same time, it is a retailer because um, as a consumer or a viewer, you're also you're consuming the content from Netflix directly. And then um, the patterns, um, um, we, we look whether the patterns can be explained by similar factors than uh, interne international trade. So um, we're going to, estimate a gravity model. We're going to look on uh, what impact the same language of uh, main production country and destination country have, the common border. And uh, we will also look at foreign uh, titles only and to see whether, for example, the migrant population has an impact on the viewing patterns. Uh, we will also um, look more deeply into Netflix um, produced content into the Netflix original. And we will also look at um, how certain title specific characteristics will um, play a role into the viewing patterns of um, the consumers. So we have um, formulated four, hypothes four hypotheses. So there's a large variation in the content of the Netflix catalogs. We know that across countries and they are reflected from distribution patterns such as copyrights and requirements. And our second hypothesis is gravity metal matters, gravity variables matter more at the intensive margin level since it reflects audience preferences within a country 
And this, for example, has also been found in other papers, for example, for movies trade. And we think that this that we find the same for online streaming as well. Third hypothesis is that Netflix original content attracts a large proportion of clicks. And the fourth, that quality is a major determinant of Netflix viewing. Quality here is not like an international trade, um, like a unit price or something. Quality is measured as uh, independent viewers ratings taken from IMDb. So in the literature, we this is a novel paper. So there's no paper um, about the number of clicks in Netflix. So Netflix, um, we have some papers that would just look at the at the um, content availability, so on the catalog, but there are so far no paper on the intensive margin in Netflix watching. So this is the first. And um, there are some papers in trade and cultural goods and services. So for example, there's um, Master in Canterbury, Dissier, Ferrer and Balfour. Netflix specific, they have, uh, some of my colleagues and former colleagues have been working on this um, around 2015, um, but mostly looking at the catalog. So um, they analyze availability of Netflix content in 11 countries and also find that there's um, very large differences in the catalogs and that um, language and um, distance play an important role. Then um, Agi and Waldvogel analyze US origin content availability. And for example, they find in their um, analysis that also um, in movie straight, for example, um, there's a disproportionately large share of American production. So this is not just uh, something that we find in, in streaming later. And it is also something that's already found in, uh, in the cinematic distribution. And uh, since we actually have a quality measure in our data, our paper is also scrapping um, uh, on the importance of quality in trade, as for example in Crosset and Chen and Juvenal. So our data comprises several data sets. We have on the one hand Netflix viewing data from January 2018 to December 2019. And um, this is information that we have uh, from similar web. They are like a data um, company that collects um, the URLs that are clicked by viewers or by internet users. And so we're looking at the Netflix version of uh, desktop version of Netflix and um, which um, proportion of clicks goes to specific titles. So each um, title has like a specific um, ID and we can see in the data um, which titles are clicked. And for example, when you have an URL that is like this, like netflix.com uh, slash title slash this ID, you get to a title page, which gives you, for example, the title um, of the TV show and um, the year of uh, production and then some other information like the genre and other things. But we um, um, can also see which titles are watched. So from this data set we get, we have uh, something netflix.com slash watch slash this. So we know which titles are just observed or where people are just interested in and we can see in which titles, uh, which titles people actually watch. So we, um, we have, um, we use this, for information and we use, use the clicks that go to netflix.com watch and this ID as actual intensive margin measure for us. Uh, we have this data for 20 destination countries, 15 in the EU, um, five non-EU and um, for 18 countries of origin. So our destination countries is where the uh, viewer sits and the origin country is the main production country of the title. So there may of, of course also be co-productions and we will look at co-productions. We have data on co-productions. We will use this um, for films later on. Unfortunately, we don't have co-production data for TV shows. Um, so this is one data set um, from SimilarWeb. Then we get this data and I scrape this 
URL and um, from this URL, then I get the title and I connect it to another data set on the catalog. So we bought very expensive uh, data for the full catalog of these uh, 20 odd countries. So we have more countries, but we don't have um, the uh, similar web data for more countries. So we have uh, extensive catalog data um, for Netflix um, and uh, we merge the click data to the catalog data. And from uh, Lumea BOG, we have also data on co-productions. Then we extract views ratings from IMDB. So there's a data set that you can just download. And we have the traditional gravity data from SEPI. So these are the countries that we cover. So we have uh, a bunch of European countries. We have Canada, the US, and Australia. <clears throat> so just uh, some quick descriptive statistics. So um, these, uh, we um, have the data, uh, we, we aggregate the data to half years this year for, um, so it's shorter, we aggregated it to half years. So we have in total, we have 14,379 titles that in total attract uh, about 765 million, uh, 4 million clicks. So in 2018, we had about uh, 11,730 distinct titles, and in 2019, uh, just slightly less, um, 11,688 titles. Then they attracted uh, 363 million clicks in 2018 and 401 million in 2019. So although um, at distinct title level, we have many more films and TV shows. So we have uh, more than 11,000 films and only 2,700 TV show titles. Um, TV shows attract a much larger share of clicks than uh, films do. So people usually use Netflix to watch TV shows and not to watch films. And of the clicks that we observe, most of them go to Netflix original productions and uh, not to non-original production. So in total, we have 764 million clicks and about 500 million go to Netflix original. Um, we also have a category that is called Netflix exclusive. So these are not produced by Netflix, but they are distributed um, in a certain way. So um, when you watch Netflix, you cannot see the difference. This is a dif dif uh, difference that Ampere makes in the data. So this is where Netflix bought the exclusive right to be the first one to stream or the only one to stream this content. So for example, if you have a TV show, then they are the first ones that may um, offer it online for their viewership. So these together would be uh, five more, more than uh, 560 million clicks. So this is uh, two thirds um of all of the clicks that we actually observe so later on we are going to make the difference between um netflix original and non-original to see um the difference between the two so um with regards to the con the genre we have um, a lot of types in action and adventure we have a very very uh, large share in comedy and uh, crime and thriller so this just um yeah very little horror movies, but there's, this is just for information. We have, um, you can see that most of the clicks go to comedy. So this we can already see now that there's both a large share of um, titles and a large share of clicks. Whereas crime and thriller has um, a large share of titles, but um, we see that the number of clicks is much, much lower. So, um, not sure, it probably comes to you as a surprise um, that uh, the most watched title is The Office from the US. So this is uh, um, a result that is mostly um, driven by US customers. So actually it's only watched by people in the US. It's not, uh, when we look, when if, if we were dig deeper in the data, we would see that um, people in Europe don't really watch this. So this is, um, driven by US clicks and then Brooklyn Nine-Nine and Stranger Things are also um, very intensely watched by people in the EU. So we have, for example, in the top 10, the shows that are watched um, within the EU are very much the same. I mean, the rank, the rank uh, varies a bit, but um, the shows 
stay to a large um, share the same. And you can also see that most of them are actually Netflix original um, productions. And uh, the one that is uh, also not, uh, but is in Europe, um, a very popular show is Friends, for example. I think this is in Ireland, for example, the most um, popular show. Um, films would only um, rank-wise uh, show up at rank 90 and 120, uh, 122, and both are Netflix original. So here we have also the slight um, notion that Netflix would, would um, kind of uh, promote its own content to be more visible than other content. So this, uh, the number of titles varies greatly um, in the catalogs across countries. Just call it time -wise. Um, so uh, most titles you can actually see in Canada and these uh, are actually, actually uh, ordered by the number of increase in catalog size actually in Poland and Denmark the catalog size uh, catalog has been increasing the most between 2018 and 2019. So Poland now has a reasonable large uh, catalog for example although in 2018 it was much smaller and I've looked for the later data from 2020 it's even bigger now so you're lucky. So when we look at the um, production countries, it's not very different actually from cinematic distribution. So we have here on the left is the US. So the large share of about 40% on average uh, comes from the US. And domestic content is here on the right. And you see it's very, very little. Uh, domestic combined with EU is also far away from 30%. So here, we still there's still some room to come to the 30%. <laughs> And uh, one of the most interesting things to know is actually the country with the lowest share of um, US productions is the US. So they have a large share of rest of the world productions, but the US is actually the smallest, whereas in Finland, the share is the largest. So I think I'll skip this one. So this is mainly saying that um, overlap is uh, very high, for example, between the Scandinavian countries uh, funnily enough, between the French and uh, the Danish catalog, and the overlap is bigger in TV shows than in movies, but uh, just uh, with respect to time, I'm going to skip that one. Then um, in this graph, we can see that actually very low number of productions receives a vast amount of clicks. So this is something that we can also see, for example, you. Cube uh, clicks. So there's this large right tail with shows that no one ever watches. And then you have these superstar titles that attract, that attract mainly all the clicks. We see this um, also here with the Netflix data. So here is the data for the um, for YouTube. And uh, this looks uh, more or less the same. So we estimate, firstly, as I mentioned before, we are looking at the extensive and the intensive margin. So we start with the content availability, the extensive margin. So we estimate the number of titles from country J available in country I and uh, regress uh, with the gravity variables, distance, uh, domestic, a stock of migrants for foreign content, uh, common language contiguity and colony. We have um, origin and destination year fixed effects. And then uh, for the intensive margin, our main specification is the number of clicks going to an individual title. So here we actually aggregate um, to a title, although a, um, for example, a TV show has several episodes and several seasons, we aggregate just one title. So that one, like that, so that for example, Stranger Things, the whole series, is uh, treated the same as a movie. Um, so we have uh, the number of clicks going to the title, then the usual gravity um, variables. We know the age of a title, we know the genre of a title, we know the quality variable. We have the users rating from IMDb. We know whether the title is a Netflix original. Uh, we know how old the title is. So we will, for a film, it's a production year. And for a show, it's the 
it's uh, the year um, of the first season. And then uh, for the genres, we have dummies as well. So action and adventure is, I think, our, our default. So summary statistics, uh, very, click, uh, very, very quick. So we have a lot of zeros in the data. So to be honest, uh, there's only uh, 6,200 observations where the clicks is non-zero. So we have, um, as an in international trades um, in, in gravity, we, we see quite often we um, deal with a lot of zeros. So we will use the PPML estimation method to, um, to deal with this. So because we know that watching a title is a very rare event. And um, we look at distance, we have colony, we have the rating. So the average rating of a title is 6.53. So in, um, in, uh, in IMDb, it can be from zero to 10. And uh, the lowest would be 1.4 and the highest is, uh, would be 9.5. So we have uh, also high quality titles and I think it's only one that is really, really bad, 1.4. Titles are on average 9.4 years old and duration over TV shows and movies combined is 36, point, uh, 36 uh, minutes. And we have a, in, within, I oh, know it's a standard deviation, sorry. Um, it is about nine years and um, the average duration is about 80 minutes. This is because um, what we saw before that there are many more films and TV shows. Um, and then about 23% in the content are Netflix original. So um, regarding the content availability and the extensive margin, we actually don't find the strong um, impact of distance, which on the one hand may be surprising. On the other hand, when you look at other um, studies in, in cultural goods, it's not. So for example, for, the, for cinematic distribution, uh, there are similar findings that you will find uh, maybe a small negative effect, but the extensive margin is not so much driven by gravity variables. So we can find, we do find significant, uh, significant impact for uh, domestic titles. We have, um, we, we see that um, they are in most countries uh, more domestic titles, but this, but distance itself um, is, um, is uh, insignificant. And also the number of migrants in a country for foreign titles only shows a strong positive effect, both for uh, when we look at all countries. So sometimes uh, we, we, um, we slice the data set to, to look at all countries. Then we have um, one data set where we look only at the same observations that we also have in the intensive margin. So there we find qualitatively um, similar results for a smaller data set. And if we exclude the US, um, only then we would find its distance effect. So before, uh, when including the US, we don't find it. If we exclude the US, we find this distance effect. But now we come actually to the core of the analysis. So we, um, in the end, um, concentrate on the intensive margins. And this is a really new thing compared to other studies. And we will also come, uh, we will also focus on TV shows, not on films, since we already saw before that most clicks actually, actually go to TV shows. So we will, we will also uh, do the estimation for, uh, for films, but we will uh, concentrate on TV shows. So we find, uh, negative uh, distance effects in all specifications that we have. We add uh, one by one um, the, um, the uh, gravity variables. So we find that common language has a strong positive effect. So even much stronger than we expected, but um, contiguity or colony doesn't um, have strong effects um, once we add control variables such as rating or the age or the genre of a title. So we stick to these, uh, to um, columns five and six. These are um, the most uh, complete, complete uh, specifications. So we find a negative um, distance coefficient of 0 0.3, minus 0 0.3, um, a strong domestic um, 
bias for uh, viewers of um, 0.7 and the super strong um, common language uh, factor of 1.5. So, and um, one thing that we found very interesting is that the Netflix original um, dummy um, shows uh, is um, 0.8, which we have to translate. We have to take the exponential of this. So um, this um, is a, um, increasing the views by more than 200%, for example. So taking this, uh, we, have, we have to use uh, one uh, exponential of this and take minus one. So the common language would increase uh, the views by 388%. So just um, this is, this is a very big um, figure, but we also have to keep in mind that most shows and films are never watched. So having a title that comes, um, uh, whose main production country has the same language as the viewing country, the destination country increases the chance dramatically, but uh, given also the titles that are never watched. So then if you look at foreign only, so before all titles were were um, included, so we could have the domestic uh, dummy in foreign only. Of course, we don't have domestic dummy, but um, we include uh, the migrant stock within a country because um, we figured that um, they may also be a driver for cultural traits. So, for example, you have okay, we don't have Luxembourg, but in some countries you have large um, migrant communities. So I think there are a lot of Polish people in the UK. You have a lot of Portuguese people in Luxembourg, for example, really significant amounts. And uh, therefore we wanted to include the migrant stock to see whether these would also have an effect. And uh, not surprisingly, it does. And um, the effect is not, of course, not as large as common language. So the common language is, um, factor is about the same in whether we take the baseline baseline or uh, the foreign shows only. And the migrant stock would add um, another <clears throat> 0 0.4 um, percent to it. No, it's 40 percent. Um, so the Netflix original is uh, the, um, the um, Estimator is uh, slightly bigger than uh, for our TV shows. So for foreign, it seems to be even more important um, to see or the um, Netflix original dummy increases the number of viewers even more. So this may be because they are promoted uh, even more on the landing page of um, of Netflix when to go to, because uh, keep in mind, we're still talking about the desktop version. So this may be, and also to say at this another presentation, this most watched in your countries, um, or most watched in your country, this, um, this uh, hot list of 10 titles that uh, appeared only in 2020. So in the time of our um, investigation, this didn't exist yet. So there's not this, what other people watch this uh, wasn't available yet during our, during our um, time of investigation. So, but we find, uh, funnily enough, is that the duration of a title doesn't really matter. So we thought that uh, maybe also that TV shows where a, um, an episode lasts about an hour, there are TV shows where, for example, comedy, where a lot of, um, durate, where a lot of episodes only last 20 minutes, but this um, once, but this doesn't seem to have any effect um, when we include it in the regression. So there's no statistically, uh, statistically significant effect to show that um, shorter um, shows would actually um, increase the number of viewers. So we this most um, this most complete regression from the last column. We also estimate this for films. So we again divide the sample into all movies where we include both domestic and foreign and foreign only. And uh, we find that uh, in contrast to TV shows for films, we don't find any distance, any uh, positive or negative distance um, coefficient significant. But what we find is uh, that we still find uh, domestic 
preference, <clears throat> um, which on the other hand is uh, mitigated once we add um, uh, an identifier for co-production. So once we know whether the title is a co-production or not, which is of course also one, if it's a domestic production, then only the co-production is significant. While if we do the same um, exercise for foreign only titles, we find the, the log migrant stock is about um, the same significance as what we found for TV shows. So it's also about um, 0.48. Um, and we also found the positive co-production dummy that um, um, we couldn't have before because before we didn't um, have for, for foreign content, you cannot have the domestic content. So for foreign content only, it depends. Uh, it's um, it's uh, also very important um, and for the viewership, whether it's a co-production or not. So then um, to uh, wrap up more or less, um, we also estimated the model by Netflix original. We, um, for, for TV shows again, um, and we estimated the sample once, including uh, domestic and foreign for not Netflix original and Netflix original. So here we include into the Netflix original category also these Netflix exclusive, which are not produced or distributed and marketed as, a, as an original. And we find a much stronger distance effect for the non um for non-Netflix original, then we find for Netflix original, which is quite interesting. So if we have Netflix, Netflix original, be it um, foreign only or domestic one, um, the um, distance seems to be mental less. So this points out into the direction that uh, there may be better marketing for Netflix original, independent of their origin. So even you may see a lot of advertisement for Money Heist, which is a Spanish um, Spanish Netflix um, production or for Peaky Blinders, which is um, like a UK um, Netflix production. And then uh, one thing that is interesting that uh, once we're looking at the duration, that now it's positive. So um, for non-Netflix originals, it uh, seems to be important, the, the length of a title seems to be important in a negative way. So longer titles that are not a Netflix original are watched less. And the duration doesn't seem to make a difference for Netflix originals. So this uh, may point at another thing that is um, discussed in the literature that when you watch the Netflix original show, that the length doesn't matter because there's like this movification of TV series that they grasp you more um, because you only you may only have um, eight episodes. They are one to one and a half hours long and it, you already have this movie feeling. So then you would still watch it even though it's very long. So this uh, will point into um, this direction. So since we're a bit uh, short on time. We also um, have some robustness check that um, qualitatively point in the same direction. So we, look, we also use Melitz and Tobal language measures and the distance measure practically stays about the same. So this is for TV shows only. And again, we have a um, <clears throat> distance measure of about minus 0.3 and um, a large uh, migrant, uh, a large um, coefficient and significant coefficient for migrants, which is again about 0.4. So this is same in foreign only. I mean, this is foreign only, of course, since otherwise we couldn't do the language thing. And um, so qualitatively um, here, the results, they very much the same. And we have also some um, robustness check excluding the US where we also have the negative um, negative effects but it's a bit we have uh, we exclude US as origin which I mean then the Netflix uh, catalog becomes very small we see the um, the number of observations becomes very small but then the common language is still about 1.5 which we had before just the distance uh, measure becomes a bit obscured and here the log migrant share 
if we exclude you as a destination becomes um, also um, <clears throat> smaller if we exclude you as um, foreign destinations. So um, then um, I would like to conclude quickly. So we found uh, both in the descriptive statistics and um, that uh, we found in the descriptive statistic that there's a profound fragmentation of Netflix catalogs. So we have um, a lot of origin and destination countries and um, the overlap is actually very small. So we have different sizes and only if two countries are very similar, then often we find an overlap. So for example, for Ireland and the UK or for the Scandinavian countries, but there may also be um, countries such as Denmark and France that have a very high overlap of countries. Uh, high overlap of titles. Um, we find that content availability and clicks are driven by different um, gravity variables. So the content availability, the extensive margin is hardly driven by distance, whereas distance is a very important, uh, is mo uh, one of the most gravity important, gravi most important gravity variable in the intensive margin. Yes. <laughs> so, um, we find um, also that there's a strong preference for home productions when we look at all titles. And um, we find for foreign titles, we find that the migrant population also plays a high role in determining the number of clicks. We find that um, film and show characteristics, um, which we would call quality, um, affect the number of clicks. And we find also that um, whether the title is a Netflix original or not is a major driver of clicks. So um, that we could also already see in the descriptive statistics that I think about two thirds of title uh, of clicks go to Netflix original productions. And we could confirm it also in the estimations that whether the title is a Netflix original or not is um, the major driver. And this is even more the case for films than it is for TV shows. Um, we found that for non-Netflix productions, gravity matters even more and that um, average duration actually has a more negative um, impact on the number of clicks. We find that people really love comedies, which is also a finding <laughs> from, uh, from movie distribution. And what, what we find what, or what we take uh, as a takeaway is that authorities should also enforce their local content regulation because the regulation um, for the audio uh, visual, uh, for the services directive um, has been in place for some years now, but we still don't find that uh, Netflix has a, um, has a catalog that would actually um, mirror this, uh, this, this obligation. And I mean, there, there was some time. And so we looked in this paper, we only looked at, script, at scripted content. Um, but even if we would extend the, the, uh, this one graph where we show the percentages of uh, domestic or EU content, if we extend it for non-scripted content, they also fall short of 30%. But then of course, it's uh, the directive, it's not um, defined if it's in viewing hours or in title number. So this just by on title level, maybe if I say, but a TV show from Europe has uh, 100 episodes and it should be by viewing hours. We haven't looked at that. So this may still be the point. And, but this is also not, uh, not stated very clearly in the directive. So this is it from me. So floor is open for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, if you, anyone has a question, please feel free to just unmute yourself and go ahead. Or if you prefer, you can write in chat and I will read it. Yeah, and also if you have very long questions, you can just write me an email. So I'm not sure what took you can maybe uh, send my email or I can also write it in the chat. Uh, yeah. Um, that should, should I write your email? No, I, I, I can write it. I just have to, I think I have to go out of presentation mode to do that. Okay. So I have a few questions, but you know, I don't want to start, so. <laughs> Why? I just have to see where I can enter the chat actually. Ah, here. 
there's quite a lot in the study. Lots okay. Of, there's quite a lot in the study, lots of factors, right? Yeah. Uh, it's very interesting to me. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, especially that uh, I'm currently doing one project that is broadly around the attention economics in mm -hmm. digital entertainment. Mm -hmm. So you're really also interested in statistics like this and the data you've shown, it looks really, really good. <laughs> um, well, if uh, there are no candidates with questions for now, I, I, I'll start if it's okay with you. Yeah, sure. Uh, I have some questions about the data. Mm -hmm. um, so similar web, uh, is the, do they like track some panel of internet users? Is, is that how this works? Okay. Yeah, so they, they check, so they have different sources actually. So they check some people, um, but also they buy data. So uh, I think they buy data from internet providers and it depends really on the country. So I think for some countries, the coverage is better than for others. But uh, mainly they, I think they check um, a, um, they, they check a panel and then they make some calculations I'm, as well. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm not, I don't know if it was me or not, but, but it froze for me for, for a few moments. Sorry, could you, could you repeat the... Yes. So um, part of the data is from a panel that they check and some other data they also buy. So I, in, the, in the paper, we have a link where they explain it because it also changes over time because I find like new algorithms or new data sources. Yeah. Okay, I see. And do you know how, because from, so the list of titles that you have in the data set is basically the titles that you observe from the similar web data, right? And not all Netflix titles. I understand it right or um so from the similar web data we have the titles that are actually clicked okay um or watched and from ampere from another data source we have the full catalog okay so the overlap is the click titles and the titles that are only in the catalog but uh, we don't see as clicked um that uh, those are the zeros in our data <laughs> Okay, I see, I understand. Okay, and do you know, um, do you have any indication of how representative this is for, I don't know if there were at any times, maybe, I don't know, Netflix issued some top 10 or something like this that could be compared to what you see in your uh, data? <clears throat> And um, so, yeah, <laughs> um, we see, we, I was also looking because this is uh, just a Netflix um, data on the desktop. So we know, of course, that people also watch Netflix on their smart TV or on an app. And there, um, for the app, we don't, um, we cannot see per title users. So we, we, we can see that people have used the app, but we don't see it on title basis. So then, but um, there's a metric on similar web to show how many distinct users there are per month. And so then there's about one-to-one, -one. but it, it changes over time. So, but then of course users may watch it on the desktop end on a mobile device, on an app, for example. So, but yeah, just to give you an idea, it's one-to-one. -one. Approximately. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. So, do we have other questions, perhaps? Well, I can go on if it's okay. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we can also we can also have a chat um, on a different day. I'm totally open to that if uh, it's just boring for other people. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, also depends if you still have time for some chat.
So I have some direct questions directly related to, the, to your study, and then I would love to chat more, if that's okay with you, uh, mm -hmm. in general about research. Okay, no, I'm definitely open. I'm also open to if, I don't know, you guys have ideas for more papers. So we have this as uh, in pretty good shape now, but I mean, we have the data, we can also do other things with it, so. Well, we'd love to, definitely, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was, if, about the paper, it was just a few more questions and I... Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask, uh, so in all your models, you include the, the comedy shows, right? I mean, when you look at TV shows. Because mm -hmm. uh, my intuition is, I, I don't know, remember now if I've read a study about the source and data or, or, or just read a, someone's take on this, that, but there are some shows like The Office and Friends and, and others like that, that basically people don't you know sit down and watch them but they just play it in the background right and so they could be both outliers in terms of how much clicks they get and also the way they are consumed in fact do you think they could somehow uh, impact any of your results or um i think it's <laughs> They will also come, I think, to cultural issues. So I don't know. I, I think it's more done in some countries that you would have it just on the side than in others. So I would never do that. I, th I, I actually don't know anyone who just in these days would have Netflix just on the side. But someone told me that it actually was an American that said, no, 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 I have, a, I have the office on the side. <laughs> So actually, no, we, we can actually look at this. I, I, know, um, I know what you mean. That, that could explain why the office is, uh, attracts so many clicks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we can make, we, we were thinking also along the lines, for example, if you have um, also as a quality driver or as a driver, if you have like the most popular, one of the most five popular um, actors, from a country, but then also to find these lists was uh, impossible. So there was uh, not an easy metric to incorporate. You mentioned the top actors. Uh, I know there's this uh, parrot analytics data. So what is it called? Parrot analytics. Mm -hmm. And they are doing something they call that they're tracking demand for TV shows. Mm -hmm. By demand, they mean demand expressions, which is people talking about stuff, people searching for stuff. They have like a joint index that they compile from different sources. Mm -hmm. And I think they've recently also started doing something like talent demand or something like that. Mm -hmm. They track uh, actors. And uh, for TV shows, I know they do it by country. So maybe mm -hmm. they also do it with actors, but but that would be like yet another data set and I don't know how to Yeah, yeah, so the thing is really to match by title. So we have by um, title, year, content type, and sometimes even production country. So there are some titles that even from the same country you have, uh, you have several times. So then you go title, year, country, um, and IMDB, because there's like The Visit, for example, it's a very generic title. You may have like three The Visits from Canada from 2015. For example, then you have to go very long in the matching. So there was a lot of data cleaning involved. And yeah, of... I can imagine that. You already have lots of uh, lots of uh, you know results to, to describe anyway. So uh, okay, and the last thing. I was wondering if you if you can, for example, in any way include the number of episodes per season or something like that for the TV shows. Because you yeah. mentioned this uh, movification of TV shows, right? Or, or I think you called it like this or something like that. And mm -hmm. I guess that will also depend on whether this is a short series or a long running one. And um, we tried to do it, but the data is too bad. And we, we have too many titles actually to do it by hand. So there, there's in the Ampere data, 
there's a metric for that, but the data is just not good enough. So with average episode title, we were um, uh, average episode length or duration. Um, there was there, there the data is slightly better, but the number of episodes per season it's very messy, really. So we can do it for the watch titles only, but then it doesn't help so much because I, I can scrape I can scrape this data from Netflix, but then I only have, I can only do it for the titles where I actually have the title ID, and this I only have for the titles that I watched and not for the ones because the match is um, by name. Like um, Ampere doesn't have the title ID that you would use in Netflix. Neither IMDb or Netflix ID, right? Um, well, IMDb, yes, I think, but yeah, then you have to make sure, yeah, we, we could link it maybe by the IMDb ID, that's a good idea, actually. <laughs> um, I think IMDb, uh, at, at least at some point, IMDb used to uh, have these data dumps that you could just download. Yeah, 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 this is also where we got the... Um, where we get the uh, rating from. So the rating, uh, we took it at February last year, I think. That's when we downloaded it. So, I mean, it keeps changing, but um, we I think we have two downloads for the rating, but there wasn't uh, a big difference for them. Yeah, cool note for the number of episodes. That's actually a good idea. We just um, have to see, we have to date back then, of course, the number of episodes back then in 2019. And then also the number of episodes that there are not necessarily the ones that are um, online on Netflix, because sometimes oh, there are some series, for example, Lucifer, where it depends very much on the country. So I think in the UK, they only have the rights for the last two seasons or three seasons that were co-produced with Netflix and not for the older ones that were not, that were only distributed but not produced by Netflix. Yeah, I have to deal with this with Paw Patrol. <laughs> yeah, but then, I mean, the, the interesting thing, so for example, Money Heist uh, was also first on Spanish TV, and originally uh, an episode was one and a half hours long, but they recut it for other markets when uh, Netflix acquired it. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, so, so this sort of data can also get messy. Yeah, yeah, so at one point you just have to draw a line, like how much do you really want to deep in, because there's always more to find. At one point you just have to. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, are there any more questions? Okay, well, uh, if you feel, you know, uh, if any questions come to your mind, feel free to write to Annette through the email in the chat. Mm -hmm. And well, thank you everyone for joining in. And well, hopefully see you all next year, right? Thank you very much, Annette, for, for presenting. It's really yeah, thanks very much for having me. Our pleasure. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.